Hey, what's up guys? This is Jay, back with part 2 of the K-Pro tutorial. In this section, I'm going to go over certain changes you can make to have the car run a little bit better from the original base map that you loaded up. So at this point, I'm assuming that you've loaded the base map, you've got your computer plugged in with the car on, with the key on, engine off. And uh, over here, when that's, when that's on, you'll see online here when your ECU is connected to the car. And then with the laptop on, you'll see online here. So that means you're good. You can start to make some changes. <clears throat> okay, so what I'm going to show you is uh, different areas you can make some changes to help the car run a little bit better. Because if you load a base map and you don't really touch it, depending, since everybody has a different car, different setup, you know, some guys will have this part versus this part and some people have a stock motor it will always run different according to um how your car is set up the way it is so so the base map will need to be tampered with just a little bit to get your your car to either a not stall or b just not have the air fuel totally out of whack so in um in this one i'm going to start with showing you uh, little changes you can make in the map itself uh without doing any actual driving uh, so here we go um, <clears throat> you're not gonna worry about there's certain sections that you're not really gonna have to bother with because uh, these are like more technical areas where if you're on a dyno and you're you have your professional tuner doing the work he will change make these changes because um, you sort of need a dyno to know how they're gonna react you know you can't really just upload them and then just go on the street like you might you know damage your motor severely but uh, these changes I'm gonna show you as long as you're careful and you follow my my uh, rules you'll you'll be able you'll be fine okay so the first section you are gonna wanna go into is uh, the closed loop section um, you're gonna wanna leave this on especially uh, because as you're driving the car you want to get 14.7 air fuel ratio that way you're not running too rich and not too lean because I know a lot of people that have fully built motors if you leave this off and you have a base map your air fuel is gonna be all over the place and you can really do some damage so just leave this on that way the car is always at f looking for a fourth it'll adjust air fuel to be around optimum storage so you'll be fine with that so just leave this enabled and then uh, if you have any check engine lights because of no secondary if you don't have a secondary oxygen sensor which a lot of guys who have like race cars or swapped cars just you can click these on you can check these on and uh, it'll disable those check engine lights safely without any uh, bad effects and uh, for the most part you can leave you can leave the rest of this the way it is you don't have to touch this um, if you have an 05 06 RSX uh, a little trick that uh, helps on uh, what will happen is with an 0506 RSX that has a K-Pro in it uh, as you let your foot off the gas uh, the car will kind of uh, kind of hesitate it'll kind of have like a jerky motion it won't it won't have like a smooth deceleration and if you enable this it'll help with that it'll kind of get rid of that so that's just for 0506 RSX owners but uh, if you don't if you have any other car with a K-Pro don't worry about this you can just leave it the way it is but it's just a little trick to help you guys uh, fuel compensation, you can leave this the way it is. Um, this is more like technical advanced things. Better off having it done on a dyno. Fuel trim. Okay, this is a good one. Here is where you enter your fuel injector size. I know a lot of people don't have stock injectors. Already preloaded on the base map is the 310, which is what most uh, RSX Type S's and TSX motors have already. Um, but some people I know they have larger injectors. So if you have a larger injector, just dial in the number uh, and it will automatically compensate for the size of your injector. No other work needed here. Just uh, leave that the way it is or like I said into your injector size upload and that'll be fine. Gear compensation you can leave this alone. Uh, the only thing I could see you having to change is you go down here go to select ratios and uh, according to what gearbox you have in your car just select uh, the appropriate one or if you have like custom gear ratios which you know some race cars have I guess you can choose one that's as close as you can find to your ratios or you can just dial it in manually here but uh, in my case I have a 2005 RSX Type S gearbox in my car so I would choose that and as you see it it changes the final drive and all the gears accordingly and that'll help with a uh, throttle position sensor and uh, ECU layout as far as knowing what gear you're in and what air fuel ratio should be 
idle um this is this can be fine if you have stock cams just leave this the way it is if you've got aggressive cams like stage two or stage three all motor or even turbocharged cams just um you can bump this up a little bit uh stock is 750 so like i said if you have stock cams just leave it alone but if you've got let's say some really wild cams and you don't want the car like bogging out on you when you when you go from a stop just you can raise this to about a thousand or 900 whatever you prefer and then just test it you know go back and forth upload one see if you like it if not you know go back to another setting down here this is for um idle control valve uh what happens is uh, when you turn the car on and you give it gas and the gas comes back down to idle sometimes you'll notice when you load the base map if you try to run the car it might uh it might idle it might go past the idle and it might go down to like 200 rpms and then come back up and it might not be a steady it should be just a steady decrease down to the idle that you've set if it goes and if it drops any lower or it 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 sits any higher than your target idle just move this knob up or down a little bit until you get your idle perfect until it's just until it after you let off the gas it comes down to a perfect idle that you've set it at so you can just move that back and forth and this you can leave alone the target idle lambda is fine 14.7 to 1 ignition compensation you don't have to do this knock and tps this is you're going to want to have this enabled because especially if you've got a high compression motor you definitely want to have this enabled or or turbocharged any motor as a matter of fact any motor just leave it on this is flash mill when knock detected is extremely helpful because what it will do is if your car does have knock your check engine light will flicker if you see this when you're driving immediately let off the gas and just try not to try not to floor the gas pedal or just just really like um be gentle with the gas pedal if you see knock on your car just let off the throttle and you know continue driving and if you keep seeing it you sh you know just just try to be very light on the gas here you can uh, adjust your TPS starting with um, what it is is with every car you're gonna have to dial it in a certain way so what you do is with the key off with the key on engine off um, these two buttons will be highlighted and then what you want to do is with your with your foot off the gas you want to click this button read the first for the minimum reading and then a number is gonna show up here and then floor the gas after that and then hit the read button with the gas pedal floored and it'll give you your maximum tps reading and then you can just save that and upload it and your your tps will be dialed in according to the map lean protection you're definitely going to want to have this enabled this is what keeps the motor um it's it sort of puts it like into a limp mode if you're um if when your car is in full throttle if your engine rpm and lambda goes above 14.7 to 1 or 14.2 in this case with an all motor setup which is very lean for floored like if your car is floored that's, that's a very lean uh, air fuel ratio it'll actually um it'll cut fuel and cut ignition and it'll sort of like the car will like jerk back and forth that's letting you know the fuel cutoff has kicked in and uh it's protecting your motor pretty much from blowing itself up because if it's if you're seeing 14.2 to 1 air fuel ratio at you know five six thousand rpms and above all the way to red line floored you know it's very dangerous that's extremely lean for any setup that i've seen so that's just leave that enabled that's that's always a plus to have that on map sensor you can leave this alone stock map sensor unless you're using a, a turbocharged setup and you have an aftermarket you click here and you just select which one you have and go from there but in my case i have a stock map sensor so i'll just leave that the way it is miscellaneous all right here you're gonna have settings one for an immobilizer and one for uh, OBD2 emissions checking, which is uh, pretty much your check engine light when it comes on and letting you know something is wrong. If you've got a if you've got a car that is uh, fairly stock, that's not like a swapped car, you can leave this enabled. Like if let's say in your case, if you've got like a, a an RSX and you had your ECU shipped out with your immobilizer then you would leave this enabled but if you've got like a swapped car like a civic or an integra which doesn't have an immobilizer system in it you just leave this off because your key is not going to be matched to it and if you leave it on the car will never start uh this if you want to have your check engine light work you just you can disable it using this right here if you leave it on the check engine light will work it'll check for obd2 settings uh, like secondary oxygen sensor etc etc 
Um, so in my case, I would leave it off because I have a race header, and if I leave this on, I'll just keep throwing a check engine light. So you know, it's pretty nifty. It gets rid of those pesky check engine lights if you if you have like race headers and whatnot. Uh, multiplexer, this you can leave to normal. This is uh, not of a concern. And the rest of this, yeah, you can just leave the way it is. There's not really much to do there. Alright, protection. This is if you have a boosted car. You have like a boost cut settings, but I don't have a boosted car, so I just leave it the way it is. I think they have it dialed in for pretty, it's pretty universal. They have it set. Here you've got, um extra settings uh, to let you know if you're overheating and this is pretty nifty because if you are overheating your throw check engine light and then you can also have the limp mode come on too so you can select you know whether you want it to come on yes or no I just leave it the way it is it's fine rev limits this is right here you can select where you want your rev limiter to be uh, you know depending on where if you know where your motor revs up to uh, usually they'll set it to according. It'll be automatically set according to the map you put on. But if your car has cams, valve springs, you can set it higher or lower. It's up to you. You know. Um, in my case, in an RSX Type S, I've got stock valve springs, so I leave it at the max, which is 8600. You know. Um, I know some people if they have aftermarket valve train, you can go up 9000. You know, if you're making power that high, feel free to raise the RPM rev limiter. Uh, down here, this is a fun one. Launch control. Uh, this is pretty much when you're sitting at a dead still and you're revving and the car will stop. It'll bounce off at whatever, four or 5,000 RPM so you can launch your car. Let's say if you're drag racing. What I do is I'll have it set to, you. Want, if you want to enable it, just have it set to always on. This is the easiest way. There's other ways you can use switches or whatnot, but I just have it to always on if I want to have it enabled and then I just pretty much you just select what RPM you want right here launch at in launch RPM limiter just select where you want your RPM to in my case I have it to about 5000 RPMs which is works fine for me some people want it higher some people want it lower but feel free to put it to wherever you want test you know mess around with it do a little test see if you like it uh, and then sequential shift cut no you don't have to do with that that's for like race cars and then the ever so famous VTEC point. In this one, you can either leave it alone or I would leave it alone because we're trying to get to the tuner and then the tuner will adjust your VTEC according to how your motor is tuned. So just leave it the way it is for now. And, um, and of course, you can leave these two enabled. Um, if you have a JDM engine, such as a K20A, you can uh, disable this because they don't have oil pressure switches unlike the US motors if you have a US motor you you should leave this you leave this on because you throw you throw a hard code if you if you disable it but on JDM engines you don't need it so uh, only if you have a JDM engine JDM only you can disable this but uh, all other motors leave it on and um, yeah that's that's pretty much it for this section uh, if you have any questions I, I I hope I've explained everything to the best of my knowledge again you know I'm not a professional tuner but this is uh, what I've used to get my car running uh and it's it's been fine for years the way it is so um you know if you have any questions just shoot me a pm or email me i'd be more than happy to help you in detail but it's just a basic overview of um how to get your map custom fit to your vehicle uh yeah so um that's that uh, i'll see you guys in part three take care bye bye